Well, hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to OLC TV for some more Total War Three Kingdoms. The Furious Wild DLC, thank you very much to CA for allowing me access early. So, as part of our preview series, next up we have Meng Huo, the King of the Man. The person who unites the tribes against the Kingdom of Shu Han. The person who leads the rebellion against Zhuge Liang's armies and of course is the one who is legendarily captured seven times before finally submitting now historically speaking we don't know if he really existed there are certainly historical records that mention his name the others it's less so certainly his wife is fictional uh but <clears throat> um we do know that there was a rebellion that it was led by a warlord in the Naman region who did unite tribes and Meng Huo is you know even if his name isn't real he's is certainly based on a real person and a real event whether he was captured seven times or the rest I I don't think there is any history that really says he was captured seven times um all it really says is that Zhuge Liang won and they submitted <clears throat> and the rebellion was put down that's all that is really said so we don't even know who the generals were really that fought on Zhuge Liang's side during that time. Like, the, the romance mentions Zhao Yun, Wei Yan, Ma Dai, but the histories don't mention them at all as being present at that time. None of their biographies mention this campaign. Unlike Zhang Ni, who is mentioned uh, attacking other tribes that have rebelled uh, during the 220 to 230 period following the death of uh, Liu Bei in 223. So he is definitely involved in putting down tribes, but whether he was involved in this conflict or not, we don't know. So it's very hard to say the true history about this. Which is why this DLC is based mostly on the romance. <clears throat> so, Meng Huo, the King of the Man. Aggressive expansion is his playstyle. It is war. His starting situation is easy, and he is a recommended character. He's one of the six recommended characters for 190 and for the 194 start dates. He, of course, is not available in 182, but... There are Nanman tribes, even if you can't play as them, in the 182 star date. He is the King of Kings. This means that he sees himself as the true leader of the Nanman people and gains a temporary bonus from earning the fealty of other tribes. The effects last for a number of turns and can be stacked, and it gives access to all reform areas. <clears throat> His unique features are, he is the true leader of the Nanman, so he has improved diplomatic relations with Nanman factions, but decreased relations with Chinese, with the Han. He has the fealty of the Man, um, so every time you conquer and either vassalize or confederate another uh, Nanman faction, they have their own fealty bonuses, which can uh, give you access to their unique troops and any research or anything that they otherwise would uh, have only to themselves. He has southern elephants, which are good. Uh, of course, Mulu has the best elephants, <clears throat> but he does have these guys available, and elephants are godlike on the battlefield. He has Nanjong champions, who are who are good. They are good, um, and he has the Nanjong spearmen, who are you know spearmen without a shield. Meh. Yeah, they'll they'll see off most enemies. It says we'll see. Um, as far as his character goes, he is brave. He is ambitious. He is stubborn, and you can see from this he has high uh, stats for resolve and he has high stats for authority. This does rather suit him being a sort of champion type character with some uh, bonuses to uh, his command uh, stature. But of course he is Nan Man, so you can you can play around with how he's upgraded in a way you can't with the hand. Um, he has Nanman, of course, and he has increased <coughs> melee damage and plus 10% relationships with the Han Empire, which sort of goes against this, which of course gives you a negative diplomatic to the Han. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is a mistake or not a bug, because we are getting patches out. It seems a little bit weird that he has a plus 10 diplomatic relation with the hand. I would have thought that would be diplomatic relations with Nanman, but we'll see. Um, and he has a minus 20% chance of evading capture post battle. This is to suit his story because of course he was captured seven times. So yeah, he has a, 
he gets captured a lot if you lose battles with him. <clears throat> now, Meng Huo shows his fen f friends every generosity and his enemies an unending merciless rage. While some may identify this as true loyalty, it belies another deeper tendency towards rage, one which can erupt at the smallest slight, easily rising to become an all-consuming blaze. This tempestuous energy has led Meng Huo to dissatisfaction with his lot. He now looks beyond the valleys of his home to greater things, uniting the tribes and destroying his enemies. What it does not mention here is that he has his wife, Lady Zhu Rong, and the two of them, if you can get them to uh, confederate each other very, very quickly, when he plays Zhu Rong, you confederate Meng Huo, if he plays Meng Huo, you confederate Zhu Rong. They have a bonus that works very well, which we will look at in game. So, let's get into it. Dao 借他们来一展雄心是一个不错的选择比如大王天下正期待着您的正义驾临 Okay, so here we are in game and again I apologize we do not have a fully working introduction video for this DLC yet it is silent, it's got some weird numbers growing up on it um, so I apologize for that, normally I would have the intro video but, you know, we'll have to wait for the Let's Plays and the Perfect Start series it should be fixed with an update that hopefully we're getting today. CA has informed me that there will be an update today, which will be fantastic because there are a few bugs here and there, but uh, this is early access, so you must expect the odd bug in this preview series that will be ironed out by the time it reaches full release. So, King of the Nanman, Mong Hua, long has your family lived and thrived in the south. Far from the imperial capital, from the <coughs> far from the imperial capital, the southern tribes, the Nanman, have been left to their own devices. Conflict between tribes for land or prestige has not been uncommon, but now it is time for a leader to unite the tribes under a single banner. You are that leader. Rise, Mong Huo, and carve a land from the swamps and jungles of the south. The Mong Huo must unite the tribes of the south under a single banner, complete your conquest of the tribes to the east, and Lady Jurong will be a powerful friend or a terrifying enemy. So there is something in this that isn't actually mentioned <clears throat> in exactly the same way for any of the other Naman factions that I've seen. And that is that the southern tribes have been left to their own devices. That is not 100% true, but it does sort of give you a general idea of what's going on. During the Han Dynasty, and this continued into Wei, Shu Han, and Wu, as well as into the Jin as well, tribes that bent the knee and sent tribute, their chiefs were allowed to basically stay as essentially an administrator rank, even potentially up to an inspector style rank um, if you're comparing it to the hand court controlling their region all they had to do was provide tribute and provide soldiers as and when needed <clears throat> and they would run it themselves and that is how they manage the tribes because the man basically the non-han barbarians as uh, the han saw them there were there were lots of them lots and lots of different ones there was the d as well you've got the wuhan you've got the xiongnu up in the north xiambei up in the north You've got the Yue tribes in the southeast. Like, there are hundreds of these minority groups um, scattered throughout China who are not Han Chinese. And 
they were, as long as they bent the knee at the right time and uh, provided the tribute, they were allowed to continue doing what they do. But they had to pay a fee, they had to swear allegiance to the hand, and they had to provide troops if needed. And troops were occasionally called upon. Um, <clears throat> so they weren't left entirely to their own devices, but it's not a bad way of describing it, I have to say. Now, the ambitious leader takes their first steps. We have taken our first steps. We must take our first steps to unite the people of the South. We have feuded with our neighbours for long enough. Now is the time to strike and send a message to our enemies. Destroy or vassalize the Jiangning tribes and get to 2,000. Jiangning tribes are here. That should be relatively easy. A Mong Huo, quite nicely, starts off with two armies, which we'll look at in a second. Ah, again, you do get Nanman-specific ancillaries. <laughs> you do, I promise you. I Every time I do my own play, I get them. Every time I'm showing something on camera, I don't. But you do, you really do get them. <clears throat> okay, so Mong Huo is here. You have the same faction rank ideas uh, that you do, and uh, once you've conquered the whole of the Nan Man area and held it for like 20 turns, I think, you are in charge of the Nan Man Kingdom. Um, and that is sort of your, your, your goal, um, as it were, for the Nan Man tribes. You have your reform choices, and the reform tree looks like this. Now, what you want to do is take note of the squares and the circles. The circles are Nanman-based technology, whilst the squares are more Han-influenced technology. And you'll recognize this does start to provide you, you go down, with more Han-like buildings. Also, Han troops. You can see here the mercenary troops. Uh, and then down here, of course, you have, are they Chang? No, they're not. They're just heavy horse archers and all the rest. Um, but you've got some cataphracts there. So you do have options that will uh, benefit you from a hand perspective or from a Naman perspective if you choose to go down those paths. But you'll notice there is a choice. You choose one or the other. You cannot choose both. They cancel each other out. So you make the decision as you start to go through and do your uh, upgrades. Now, first of all, you have to do elephant taming, and elephant taming will give you uh, an elephant, which can be equipped as a mount. Elephants are quite good mounts. Um, they do a hell of a lot of damage. You're, of course, slower than you are on horseback, um, and you cannot use your own abilities. Uh, you have to use the elephant abilities, which is uh, basically two area of effect, attack, splash damage effect. One of them, the gore, is extraordinarily powerful. It's like 19k damage. Um, and there is a morale debuff as well. <clears throat> so we have to do that. You notice down here, you have this symbol here. This means that you can only unlock this when you've united all the tribes. So when you've united the tribes, you can then get access to this tier. But until that stage, you only have the others available to you. Okay, quick look at his court. We have Meng Huo here. This is prior to him being married to Lei Durong. We have his faction heir, Meng Jie, who is actually his elder brother. Now, Meng Jie was not willing to rebel, and actually in the stories, and I am talking romance here rather than history, um, and I will be sticking to that throughout because there isn't much history to go on. Meng Jie is the person who actually helped <coughs> um, Zhuge Liang navigate some of the swamps and, and, and poisonous areas of the South to be able to win his campaign. So um, he's not all that trustworthy for you, really, if we're being honest. Um, we have a tribal council. Cave Lord is like an administrator. Tribal council um, is effectively a court member and advisor. Um, and then you've got the advisor and seer, which are more like your prime minister and, and uh, grand tutor type roles. Now, we have Noba Chu Ju. Um, if we drop him in, it is going to cost us a chunk of money. But we will get reduction in corruption and we'll have no desire for higher office. Um, yeah, go on in. We'll throw him in. Um, and uh, that'll work for him. Uh, now, here. Meng Jie is leading an army here at Janning. We have some money here where we can start to build stuff. Uh, what do we need in this province? We have just coming from population but we see here we have spice we have copper mines so it's industry industry very much industry we cannot build much of that what we can do however is start to build a place of festivity or a land development for food 
The pop growth is not something to be sniffed at. I think we'll go for pop growth first. Um, Mongjia, our lands are sprawling and difficult to defend. My elder brother guards our southern border, allow me to expand my reach. However, he eschews the old ways and has become dressing in a manner of the Han court, a most strange development. Yes, he likes the Han. He does not. Now, of our court, we do want to uh, check a couple of things out here, see if there's anything that will work quite nicely with us. We don't have cavalry. We do have elephants. That's not altogether useful. You... No, I mean, let's be honest, none of you guys really suit any of these, but uh, I'll give that to Mongjie. I'm going to give this one to Noba Chujiu. And then we have a pig and we have a stone archer. Well, guess what, man? Guess what? Uh, you guys can have <coughs> these and hopefully that'll keep you happy. That is one of the worst selections I've ever had at the beginning of the game. Now, whilst we're here, we're just going to have a quick look at the Nanman characters. So, you can see here, we have the standard, their name, and everything else, but they do not have a color uh, that assigns them to a specific type. You can see he has plus 20 cunning, of course, which gives him a boost to cunning, but he also has a set it, which is a resolve and authority, and all of these are authority as well. So you have a choice with how you want to upgrade him, because every time he levels up, you can choose to put a point in any one of these five things here, and they have five points, giving you up to a plus 50 level of uh for that uh thing so if you wanted to make him a vanguard type wouldn't be your best idea but say you did want to he's got 46 now if you keep boosting this up he'll get 10 every single time you upgrade and you'll be able to shift him up to become very very powerful very very quickly in vanguard also you have these now this is where you get your scare your melee armor piercing and all of that stuff and these come from feats achieving things so if you kill 300 people you get plus 10 melee armor piercing damage for this character now he has to personally kill them it can't be just his army or anything else and so for all of these is what they do personally and you can see at the bottom the unlock requirements so as a cave lord construct buildings in your commandery and you'll get all of this stuff okay so that's how it works for them now our opening gambits we can do a trade agreement. We can trade with the Jiangyang tribes or Anhui Nan. Anhui Nan, there is quite big. We might wish to trade with him. Negotiate deal. Request regular payments, please. Uh, this should offset how I've been spending money so far. That'll do. I'm not overly worried. This is uh, merely a. Um, introduction to this character we're not doing a long-term thing but yeah you can work that out for a little bit more money if you chose to Here we have 361 coming in and we want to go beat norgul luen so off we pop to smash her decisive victory we're gonna go in here and just beat her up just to uh, show off his troops i know this is normally a very very easy fight and you would normally just auto resolve okay <clears throat> so as we're saying, I think it's, you know, good enough to show them off and everything else. Normally you just delegate something this easy, but I'm going to show them off. So here is Mong Huo. He has his dual swords. He's looking very cool with his feathered hat and everything else. Very, very nice indeed. Next to him, we have the Nanjong elephants. 24 of them. They do have uh, some really quite cool stuff here. Rapid cadence, aggressive cadence and cautious cadence. They act as drums that will boost uh, <clears throat> certain things to do with them, I believe. It is only them, right? No, it is not. It is the uh, surrounding area, which is quite cool. Um, I didn't notice that when I was playing earlier. And also, you get stuff like uh, Miasma and things like that, which will uh, boost them if they're in a forest. Um, and they are really cool. They're a whole load of drum elephants to help support your troops. But elephants, when they hit, they hit hard. The other elephants that you can get have uh, archers on top, which are really quite cool. Now here we have just the standard, uh, not standard, we, here we have the Nanjong Champion Axemen. You can see they have better quality armor than next to them, the Nanman Warriors, who are the standard Axemen. Nanman Warriors as well seem to have stone axes, whilst these guys actually have a higher quality, possibly even metal axe, makes them quite a lot better. Uh, we have the spears over here, just... Uh, Straightforward Nanman spears, nothing too impressive. Armorless, shieldless, bamboo, saw, uh, bamboo spiky wielding people. 
and our generic officer at the back with his stone axe and cool face paint. Okay, we're all ready. Let's begin. So you can see uh, we don't actually have any missile troops in this army. Um, <clears throat> Mongol is rank two. Norbaluen is not. Uh, doesn't want to duel, unfortunately. Now, Monghua has Defiant Cry, which is a morale debuff, which is really quite nice when he's in combat. So, sort of like a Vanguard, uh, I forget, Roar of the Beast or something like that. He also has the Power of Love. Now, this works in uh, conjunction with Jurong's own. So, if you have the two of them together, you get plus 25 damage resistance and immune to fatigue over a 5,000 meter effective range. It's brilliant. And then of course the Miasma as well. But you two shift up here. Uh, the elephants I think can just bloody charge. Uh, uh, you guys can't quite keep up unfortunately. If you can have the elephants marching at the same time, that's wonderful. Uh, but we are going to shift to this. We're going to shift you guys to this flank. You and you are going to go straight there. And then you three are going to come onto this flank here. You and you charge. What do you have? Do you have anything interesting? Oh, you do. Blow for a blow. Cost 10% of his own health, but it does a 22k splash damage. That is brutal. <clears throat> Defiant cry. Take this off. Take this off. See the destruction those elephants have wrought here. They just walked through them. We haven't lost an elephant. They just walked through them. Mongkwa, if you don't mind. Focus on Nor... Uh, Norguluen. Uh, Nanjong elephants. Go chase. We'll finish her off really, really quickly. Um, she's going to go down. He's going to chase them off. We've got her. Ideally, I don't want her to attack any of my troops so we just don't lose a man. That would be magnificent. That would truly be magnificent, but it's not going to happen. Here she comes. Get the spears in there. Axes in there. You boys in there too. All of you, gang up on her. You can come back now. You guys can come back over here. Go on, get in there. <clears throat> um, there's no benefit to us actually killing her as well. Because we may be able to get her if we confederate her faction. Which you can confederate Nanman factions very, very quickly as the Nanman. As we shall see, hopefully, in a turn or two. Decisive victory? Of course. It was only ever going to be thus. She's escaped with 39 people. We have lost... A few. A few. But not many. Not many at all. Okay, good. Yeah, we lost 12. No problem. She's gone. We're going to take the money. We don't need anything else. And we've advanced there. Now what we want to do is advance towards Jiangling, but we can't quite make it at this time. Next turn, though, if we can capture Jiangling, we should be able to uh, confederate it. They have further Jiangling tribes down here under Anhui Nan which we definitely want to take. Question is, do we want to take them out straight away or do we want to go north to Jiangyang? Um, who knows? Let's continue for a bit. What we certainly want to do is work with Lady Jurong and get her in as fast as possible. And one of the fastest ways to do that is actually to beat her forces, take her territory and force her to confederate, to be honest. <coughs> um, diplomatic means may take slightly longer than we would want. So, here we are. Uh, she's confederated Yunnan. Lady, yeah, Jurong has confederated Yunnan. Our buildings, we've built a building which is wonderful. We're going to send him straight into Jianning. Uh, close victory, <laughs> seriously. Right, we lost a few hundred, but we've taken it. And here are the options. Sack and withdraw. Who can occupy? We get penalties. Occupy, we get penalties. Vassalize, where they're left alive as their own faction, but they pay tribute and we still gain fealties. Or we confederate where we will consume them and all their lands and family members will join us. However, this may be seen as an act of treachery, um, but we definitely get the fealties too. So we're going to vassalize them and this will give us these bonus bonuses, which is a wolf pack, which will be quite interesting. 
Now you see here, all the minor tribes give you a very small number of bonuses. The bigger they are, the more bonuses you get. With the big boys like Lady Jurong, Wu Tu, Shamu Ke, Mulu, Du, Si, and Yang Feng giving us the biggest bonuses of them all. And of course, as you confederate them, you do get all of these people. Now, what should also be noted is you get minus five diplomatic relations with the Han Empire for every single tribe you bring under your control. So, the more powerful you get, the more the Han take notice, the more you need to deal with the Han. But this is fantastic. We have taken the first steps and we've got 2,000. We did need the money. Um, now, <clears throat> cooperative conquest. On the course of your journeys, you chance to encounter a warrior who introduced herself to you as Zhu Rong. You are struck by her imposing countenance and confidence of boys. Knowing her at once to be a warrior of renown, she could be a powerful ally if she deigned to join the struggle. So you can ignore this, or you can work with Zhu Rong. And we want to work with Zhu Rong. So we're going to battle An Hui Nan. An Hui Nan can sod off. The Nan Man expand their reach. If we take his territories, we will be able to reach that. Hong Hua has declared war on An Hui Nan. Belty of Jian Ning we have. And character developments. We can hire all of these chaps here. Now. With all of this money that we have been given, we have a choice. Do we want to start to build out our armies? Which we may want to do. Um, we can get the heavy war elephants for him too. But that would be damned expensive. Um, of course, as well, we do want to start to upgrade some of this stuff so that we can get more money as well. Do we want pop growth or do we want income from industry? That's percentage wise. If we upgrade this, we'll get extra pop growth. I think we want to spend the money there for now. His army will move down and then we'll gang up on Dian Chu. I think that will be our best bet. She is very, very friendly with us, which is quite nice. Uh, Sanka tribes we could work with. Um, mm, go on. Zang, no, Zanka is going to get wiped real soon. We'll sign a deal here. Uh, request regular payments. No. All right. Cash. Cash up front. That's not a lot. That really isn't a lot. Still, <clears throat> better than nothing. There we go. And uh, that should work. Don't want to worry too much about the other tribes. Our aim is to go down, hit Anhui Nan, and see if we can confederate with Durong as fast as possible. Durong, of course, is a fictitious uh, character. Uh, of course, Meng Huo probably had a wife, um, but like I said before, we don't really know if Meng Huo was his real name. Durong certainly was not her name because she was not descended from the goddess of fire. I think that is a tiny bit far fetched. Um, now we have uh, Nogu Luen, who of course was in charge of uh, Tangao here. Now, I didn't mention before, but it should be noted, uh, they have changed how these look. So you have these, you still have the little uh, faction, uh, so not faction icon, the settlement icon here to tell you what type of settlement it is. But you don't have it written down here anymore. What you have instead is the historical name of that. Well, obviously not exactly everything was there because there was more cities, more settlements, and all the rest, certainly in some of the more populated areas of China. But it is a historical name of a location that was genuinely in that place. They've tried to make the map as historically accurate as possible. Trade influence, trade influence, trade influence really isn't going to help me. Okay. Now, with that done, do we wish to head this direction or do we wish to head this direction? That will be three turns. That will be... Three turns. Two. We'll head down this way. That's fine. No problem at all. You're going to shift here. Um, and I think we're going to shift you into ambush mode. You need a little bit of time to replenish your troops. But we want to possibly actually get in a couple of slingers. Just a couple. Uh, to boost our number. You have slingers. So you're okay. Nope, that's good enough. Right, let's continue. And of course, because we're in the southeast, because roads are not, you know, a thing, really, in the same way as you get up in the north uh, or the central plains. Uh, where is Jiang Yang? Jiang Yang is here. Negotiate. Okay, fine. You, you. Okay, I have no problem with that. 
I'll break it later. <clears throat> um, right. Yeah, so th there are roads, but they're not, you know, they're not great. <laughs> they're really not great. Um, so movement in this southern area is a little bit challenging. Here is An Hui Nan himself, and An Hui Nan has a small army. He's the Marshal of the Third Cave, of course, because when uh, Mong Ho was seeking his third alliance, uh, prior to his third capture, it was his alliance with uh, An Hui Nan. Um, that force doesn't look particularly good. That defensive force does not look particularly good. We wonder what he has in Dian Chu. That is a thing that would interest me. Can we see yet? Oh, it's not good. It's not good at all. We might be able to take that out ourselves. I don't know, though. Interesting, I've not tried that before. Uh, yeah, it's still no use to me doing that, so we're not going to. On the old diplomacy front, doesn't seem to be anything else we can do. As far as diplomatic treaties go, we can military access, we can trade and marriage, and we can war. Um, you'll notice in this list, we have no access to the Han from this point at the moment. It may change um, later as you, uh, <clears throat> well, it does change as soon as you come into contact with the Han factions, you can trade with them. But we have no direct contact right now, so we can't do anything. I didn't mean trade, I mean uh, negotiate with them. Um, but we have no direct contact right at this moment in time, so we can't. Okay. Now, he has recruited more people. With that in mind, with that in mind, we can shift our boy all the way over here, which will give us support so that we can attack him from two sides, giving us reinforcements. Hopefully, it says a Pyrrhic victory. Um, of course it does. It is, I think, a settlement battle. Yes, it is. So this should be a lot of fun. Let's get into it. Because, of course, the Nanman have their own unique settlements. <clears throat> now, of course, if they take over a Han territory, um, I have fought some settlement battles uh, against Nanman tribes in technically Han territory where it has been a Han settlement. Nanman settlements have a different artwork altogether, which is really quite cool. Okay, so here we are, and this is the Nanman. Fantastic building design. I absolutely love it. So this is a settlement battle if you are the Nanman. <clears throat> now, we have our reinforcements coming in over here. So I potentially want to attack from a different side just to give our boys uh, a flanking opportunity. I'm going to take that away. This will be tough. They say it's a Pyrrhic victory. So this will be tough. And these elephants here are not steamrolly elephants in the same way that the other elephants are. We need to bear that in mind. Now, you're a little bit hurt, which is fine. We want the Nanman warriors to advance up there. We want you boys to advance down here. Okay, so they're going to advance over there. We're going to need to push through up here. With our axes leading the way, we will have our slingers positioned over here. Um, I'm going to take another three sets of axes. I think I'm actually going to go around here. Spears are going to be in support. You and you ride. You advance. Um, and we are probably going to want some melee damage or some melee evasion. Melee evasion will help us hold out longer. Um, melee damage is just cool though. So we'll decide. You're going to rush to position. Mong Jie, you want to stay just out of range if that's okay. Um, Axe 1, charge. Axe 2, charge. Elephants? Pop go scary mode, please. We're in on this side. We'll see if we can hold this. Um, our axes are following. Come on, advance up. I want to sling the crap out of them, please. You boys are so slow. <clears throat> okay. So. 
They're sending their Naman warrior captain at me. Fine. Charge. This fight here is going to be a little bit messy. They have two officers in there. We're going to have to pile in with you guys. Uh, Mengjie, if you don't mind, rush. Rush up here. Quickly, quickly, quickly. We're fighting down here. Uh, that's no use to me, but this might be. Get in. Go, 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 go. We need the speed. This Nama warrior's captain. It's going to be really hard to shift, actually. He's doing, a, he's doing a solid job holding that ground. Out you come. Out you come. All right. They are running, which is sort of to be expected. I wonder, though. I wonder. These boys are just going to take a little bit too long to get there. You hold that ground. You're fighting there, Moncourt. You boys, in. You boys, over here. You boys, over here. Please. Uh, charge, 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 charge. This fight here is not going spectacularly well. Can we just ride our elephants through it, though? That is the question. You're going to head forward. We have taken that ground, hopefully. That's okay. You don't mind them fleeing. These elephants, can we ride through? Can we ride through? Good, you're back. Get back into that fight. The elephants are... Uh, not having the best of luck. They will push through eventually. But they're dying in big numbers for the progress we're making. Come on, boys. Come on. We're doing massive damage to them, though, in return. And that is sort of the idea. Go on, get into this fight. You guys, get straight there. You guys, come round. You. Uh, in here. Rear line. Charge, 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 elephants, charge. Come on, push, 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 push. In you come, guys. In you come. You guys, keep slinging away. Keep slinging away. Keep fighting. Stay on them. You. Brilliant job. Fighting there. Mongjie, excellent, in you go. You can slide around the flank. Your uh, Mongkwa, if you don't mind, you're coming in there. We're going to pop some of this now. You guys are straight into this front. We want a, yes, we want a charge in right here. These boys are going to come in down here. Slingers, sling away. Ah, shit. Our elephants have run. Our elephants have run, and this fight over here is really not going well. Still, we're breaking them on this front. We are breaking them on this front. Four, three, two, one. Come on, keep pushing. You, up here, please. Come take this ground. Uh, yeah, down here, boys. Down here, boys. Let's get rid of Al Nan. He is their lord, of course. So let's smash his face. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. That's fine. They can flee. Get yourself in here. Start fighting. You boys as well. All of you, sling down here. This fight has not been lost 100% yet. It will be, though. We just need these Naman Spears to hold for just a touch longer. And we should be able to mop up. Okay, you are definitely winning that fight. You guys. Yeah, guess what your job's going to be? Get back in there. Um, you're ganging up on him. You guys are winning that. You charge off up here. You guys are here. You guys can advance. We want you on morale melee evasion. Um, alright. We've won. Push, 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 push. You into this fight. You stay on them. You're back too. Good job. Get your ass in here. They are starting to wobble properly now. Which is uh, all down to bringing down their leader. We've still got a little bit of time before we can do that. We need them to break so we can start to shift troops down this way. These elephants, they are steady. Can we get a charge off? Do we think? Go and raise their backs with stones. Can we get a charge off? Will this charge do anything? Uh, not, not bad, not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. Right, you two gang up. 
You axes, come form down here. You axes, go form here and hold that ground. We cannot afford them to come in our rear. Damage. You guys keep slinging, please keep slinging. We are starting to win on that front after massive losses. You boys have one over here, you can shift. You keep killing. Seriously, just keep killing. It does, it does. Go on, get in there. You as well, axes, charge. Right, Mong Hua, drop your thing. Yes, very nice. Just those boys over there who are now getting their asses absolutely caned. She... Mm, she is putting up a fight, unfortunately. Right, you shift down here so you can finish them off. You guys can come down here just to hold. Uh, don't chase, don't chase, don't chase. Reform, reform. Hong Ho can do his bit. I'm okay with him doing it. You guys, chase them. No problem at all with you chasing them. You back out of that fight. You hit her. You sling in there. The axes will deal with it. The axes are very slowly making their way over there. But we have to give commendation to whoever is uh, commanding the spear unit because they have held throughout. They're about to break because they're about to be rear charged um, unless this uh, elite unit of axes can get there in time to save their ass. Um, but we are, we are winning. Slingers, boys, back here, please. You, form here. All right, they've broken, they've broken. Just these boys here. Those axes don't stand a chance. You're gonna form up there too. She is about to run. Go and jump on her. Bon uh, yeah, it seems like they're coming back. So come back over here just to deal with them. Charge! They got more people coming back because they have large numbers fleeing, but that's okay. That's okay. They're allowed to have large numbers fleeing. You boys can shift over here. You guys are almost in something that might resemble a formation. Almost. Not quite. She is broken. They are broken. Uh... Yeah, just up here then, really. So, Mong Hua, you're chasing them. Do you know what? Hit that warrior's captain. Victory. Not, um, not pretty. Not pretty. But a victory nonetheless. Pyrrhic victory, of course. Doesn't matter, though. An Hui Nan, his main force has been defeated. Uh, as has Liu Ba Chu Zhu. <clears throat> his uh, garrison commander who actually put up one hell of a fight. Right. We've taken it. We've got an ancillary and we're going to occupy. Because we haven't, even though we've taken him out, we haven't conquered his whole territory so we can't uh, confederate. But we have some level ups. So if we look here, Nova Chuju has leveled up. Um, what we want to do is start pumping stuff into either cunning or expertise to improve him. He has a lot of expertise, but he has a lot of cunning naturally, which is quite interesting. And this as well, these have started to fill up. Why? Because uh, if you win battles with this character in your army, this will start to improve. And if we have uh, several, it will bring us up to plus 20 morale, then plus 40 morale, then unbreakable. Here we have Warmonger. So again, occupy settlements, we get stuff. Missile Chief, uh, Missile Units will improve, Personal Kill Rate will improve, he got 340 so he already has level 1 in this, and Tireless Soul, so fight siege battles and eventually he'll get plus 15 campaign movement range. Now what I'm actually going to do is make him my Missile Troop Commander for this army, so he is going to level up there. Mong Ho on the other hand, Mong Ho on the other hand, we are going to continue to up his authority until we've reached 200. I have ah so there's there is a Nanman specific that's a shaman um, which is very very nice but he's leveled up there oh we have another level up uh, oh no I didn't press apply there we go done uh, we got a machete which we don't need we got traits gained of butcher because of course they both got over 300 kills uh, ranks gained for them both and Jian Ning is now ours.
and uh, we got a chunk of cash to go with it so Shreyun, we want what? Hmm. Do you have a lot of industry coming in here? That's not bad at all. Um, if we can meet income straight from spice, though. Oh, that works for me. That works for me. So, yeah, this army is now good. They're a little bit battered, but we'll move them out. These guys are going to replenish for a turn. And, uh, yeah, end the turn there. Then the idea is to push as fast as we can over to uh, Dian Chur, uh, in Jianning and take that, and that will complete a couple of missions for us. Uh, Man Chong. Man Chong is there, not aggression. Okay, yeah, no problem. For now, that's no problem. I can break whatever later. I can give a toss. Right. Uh, prepare the economy. Iron pits have been done, so we've got economic breakthrough. Fantastic. The enemy's secrets. Defeat three armies or garrisons from the following subculture Nanman, and we will get military breakthrough, which will give us more uh, technology that we can search and a fast research rate. Keep your enemies closer. We get a political breakthrough, um, which again, all tears and elephant taming has been done, and we've completed that already. And Ciliary's gained. We have a war elephant. So if we so wish, we can put one of our officers on a war elephant. First, however, let's have a look at this. So all of these have now become unlocked. These have not. They are still locked. These are not. So we can choose what we want to do. Income from food, peasantry, pop growth, trade agreements, trade influence. I think we will go for a trade agreement first. Um, you no longer need to be doing that. Uh, you can advance. You as well can advance. I think our armies are strong enough as they are. What I am tempted to do, however, is you have quite a good killing move on the ground. But for the moment, you can't really hit hard. You have a crap weapon. We give him an elephant, he rides an elephant, he can be frontline, break stuff, smash things. It's quite wonderful. That done, nothing else we can really do here. They might want peace, but we couldn't give a toss. Everything else is fine. We're going to go hit the Zanka tribes later. End the mission. We just need to defeat Anhui Nan in uh, Jianning now. And Diantra will fall very, very quickly with these two armies advancing on it. It's not a settlement battle, it should be fast. <coughs> uh, I'm fine. This is only a preview. We'll do that just to guarantee that we don't get attacked during the preview because we'll be finishing after we... Yeah, we're coming up to the end of time, so it won't take very long. The Jurong has declared war on Manya Chang, which is fine. Mulu has declared war on Chupan. Mon Yo has come of age. Fantastic. We, our child has come of age. Attrition, of course. We are suffering from attrition. Mon Jie is the one suffering from attrition. So, I think, uh, Mon Jie, if you don't mind, just... I don't know how close I can get you there. And then you, boom, jump straight in there, please. And close victory, we're just going to delegate it. And here are our options. So same thing, confederate vassalize occupy penalty. We're going to confederate him and that will be our second tribe controlled. And we have managed this. So we are now a chieftain. We've confederated Anhui Nan, we have the fealty of Anhui Nan, and now we need to gain the fealties of all the Nan Man tribes. So what does this do for us? We have a law enforcer, how wonderful. Uh, right, so what this does for us is uh, this. If we have a look here, where is Anhui Nan? Anhui Nan gives us recruitment reduction for Nan Man units, which is really rather good. So what we have now is from the Janning tribes, we can unlock wolf pack units and we can recruit people more cheaply, which is magnificent. We have, of course, Mong Jie has leveled up Mong Jie. Mong Jie, what do I want from Mong Jie? Yeah, you can definitely go up this route as well. Um, so Mong Jie has leveled up uh, and we've got, uh, where is it, Anhui Nan has joined us. Xian Zhu will join us. We've got Mong Yo as well, the bullheaded fighter has joined us. So we're in a pretty damn good position. 
And of course, now we should be in a very, very good relationship with Lady Jurong because we have completed her mission. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is where we will leave it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this preview of Meng Huo. Uh, please don't take this as you might one of my uh, <coughs> perfect start campaigns. This is merely a preview. After we have had all the updates to make sure all the bugs have been ironed out, that is when I will start doing my Let's Plays and my uh, faction-specific uh, uh, perfect start videos. But until then, I really hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, stay tuned for more of these faction previews. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye-bye.